I couldn't sleep on the bus uh, in this top bunk. It was it was too drafty. And my throat, you know, was getting screwed up. So I had I'd always go sleep in the back lounge. We couldn't get it all together. We were arguing with each other and saying, well, you know, I want your bunk, well, I want your bunk, blah, blah, blah. I've never told anyone this, by the way. But um, our manager said, well, why don't we just draw cards? And we said, sure. So we shuffled the cards, said highest card, and you get first choice of bunks. So, you know, I, I reach for a card, and I, I pick two of hearts. Cliff reaches for a card, and he gets ace of spades. You know, James gets a card. And Lars gets a card. So Cliff has first choice of bunks. So he says, I want your bunk, Kirk. I go, fine, fine, you know. So he gets my bunk. I, I end up with a bunk in the front of the bus, which was, like, not as good. And that night the accident happened, and uh, it was a horrible thing because, you know, Cliff was in my former bunk. What happened that night was that um, the driver supposedly hit a patch of ice and the bus skidded. It shattered the windows and Cliff got thrown out of the bus and the bus landed on top of him. And uh, when it actually happened, I got thrown out of my bunk and knocked unconscious for like three or four seconds. And when I got and when I came to, I heard everyone screaming, but I didn't hear Cliff. And I instantly knew something was wrong because I didn't hear him. And I got out of the top of, of the bus, because there's an emergency hatch at the top, very top of the bus. And I turned around, and there was Cliff. And I just said, oh, my God. And I walked away, and I just, I was in, in absolute shock. And uh, I, just, I, I was delirious. I was in shock. I was hysterical. Everyone was screaming and crying it was it was too unreal to just deal with it was like you know this doctor came into the room that i was in the hospital and told me that a bass player had died and that was it was just too unreal <laughs> tour manager at the time, Bobby Schneider, said, uh, uh, you know, after everyone was kind of taken care of there, he said, you know, let's let's get the band and go to the hotel. And he said, you know, when he said band, it was like, mm, it's not really a band right now. And uh, we couldn't really grasp it for a while. We had to sit down and, and actually face this, um, you know, what were we going to do? We, we realized that, that the last thing that Cliff would obviously want us to do, and, and we just we couldn't stop now. There was, you know, Metallica had always been about going against whatever would come come our way and just sort of carrying on. We weren't really looking for a Cliff Part Two, you know, someone who could like solo a lot and someone who was really eccentric like he was in his own way. They'd come in with their bass and they'd plug in and start fiddling around, and you knew right away it's like Ugh. we had the little the little signal, you know, <laughs> that we'd. Uh, you know, it was like, see ya. You know, you could tell if, you know, he's like, bap, 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 you know, doing this funky stuff. It's like, wait a minute, you know, next. One day, this kid named Jason Newstead just walked in, and uh, it was pretty obvious that there was something about him that was pretty different. It wasn't just about playing bass. There's so much more to it, and those guys knew it, and I knew it. Deciding immediately that the band had to go on, the surviving members of Metallica set their sights on a new bassist, Jason Newstead, from a band called Flotsam and Jetsam. They chose their local hangout, Tommy's Joint, to tell him the good news. But I guess that was part of the test, too, was to see if I could kind of hang and have, you know, beers and keep, uh, keep myself together. So me, James, and Kirk kind of ended up meeting in the bathroom up here, and uh, we were standing there relieving ourselves and basically looked at each other and said, is that the guy? And we just and all just, you know, nodded and said, yeah, that's him. We came back, sat down around this very table. Lars said, so do you want a job? When I said, yeah, and I just got a little nutty and started screaming a little bit, you know. I just basically looked at him and I said, hey, man, want a job? And this is what he did. Woo-hoo! 
scared everybody out of the establishment. <laughs> and, then, and then we thought twice about this. I knew there was going to be tests, and I knew that people were going to be messing with me here, messing with me there, trying to figure out if I was going to be the right guy for the job. And uh, that's certainly what happened. And it came from, from all ends, you know, it came from crew guys and friends and family and whatever. But uh, stuck it out, and here we are six years later. which is exactly the place where five years ago this month Metallica hired a new bass player. What was it like? What exactly did you what say to Jason? What was his name again? <laughs> what was his name? J Jim. John. Jason. 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 It was Jason. Like, how, did, um, how did this happen? Was well, it an emotional we were, scene? We were holding auditions uh, a few miles from here and then we basically narrowed it down to two people and we wanted to spend some time with each of them to see if we could like hang with them and so on. So obviously the real test is can they come out and drink with us? So. <laughs> We took Jason down here. We'd been out with the guy, the other guy, the day before. We took Jason down here. We were consuming beverages at about one o'clock. So me, James, and Kirk kind of ended up meeting in the bathroom up here, and uh, we were standing there relieving ourselves, and basically looked at each other and said, "Is that the guy?" And we just kind of all just, you know, nodded and said, "Yeah, that's him." We came back, sat down around this very table, and I basically you can be you can be Jason. Yeah. I'll be, okay. I'll oh, be Jason. Well, I just basically looked at him and I said, hey man, want a job? And this is what he did. <laughs> Woo wow. It scared everybody what a, what out of the What a moment that must have been. <laughs> and, then, and then we thought twice about this. Right. From then on, it's been straight downhill. Right? <laughs> this, is, this is the beginning of the end. Okay, well, it's we a, little, love you, Jason. a little bit of history here. It's uh, Tommy's joint. We're going to take a quick break right now, but we'll be back with lots more San Francisco with our hosts and guides, Metallica, so don't go away.